Good evening, people of the book. Back again in the kitchen as usual. Been down to um, Max again, down, down to Palfrey's Butchers in Newport, Church Road. Proper old school traditional butchers doing proper meat. None of this imported rubbish from Brazil, Argentina. Uh, that's raised on feedlots, never seen a blade of grass in his life, fed GMO corn, pumped full of antibiotics, growth hormones, all of that sort of stuff. This amazing piece of meat, local, grass-fed T-bone steak. Now this has been aged for almost 120 days. Mark started hanging this in August. This is a cut off the same rib of beef that I'm having for Christmas. So, T-bone steak. The steak lover steak as they call it. You've got two steaks really. On this side of the bone, you've got a sirloin. And on this side of the bone, you've got a I have fillet and it sits on the, on the top of the cow on a rib, obviously. So yet again, I come home from a butcher's, put it on the side, take all the wrapping off it, nothing on there at all, seasoned it with just salt, you don't do pepper, put pepper in a pan, burn, acrid, olive oil. Got a pan there, absolutely red hot. No oil, no fat, you've got a fat cap on the outside that's going to render and you've got marbling in the sirloin, in the pan. Now, the other day I got accused of my timings. So, that'll go in now, on a high heat, for about two minutes. Cook it. For about two minutes on the one side, turn it, get that caramelised back you want on it, and that's where the flavour is. When you turn it, then colour, and you want to keep turning it then every 15 or 20 seconds so it doesn't burn. For a medium rare steak, steak of that weight, about a pound in weight that one. You look in at around about five to six minutes for medium rare, eight to ten, you're going into the medium, the medium well done. I don't cook steak anything over medium rare. If it's well done, it's burned. So don't touch it. Put it in a pan, leave it. I'm, I'm going to serve this up tonight with um, some carrots and parsnips that have been confied in some beef dripping that I got from Mark as well. They've been in the oven for about two hours on a low heat, beef dripping, garlic, rosemary, thyme, a little bit of salt and pepper left. I've also got some Brussels sprouts that uh, I've cut, cut in half, we've got it in a pan with a bit of bacon, Cooked off, bung in the oven, eight, ten minutes, done. So like I say, no oil, no fat. We've got the colouring on there, nice coat colouring on there now, in on the other side. One of the hardest steaks to cook is a T-bone, like I say, because you've got a sirloin and you've got a fillet. So you, you know, you, you definitely don't want to be overcooking that fillet. Overcook that fillet, we all know what that's like. I got my meat pro ready. I'll give it a test. I want it at 48. Internal temperature, if you haven't got a meat probe, like I said, five, six minutes. Or you can do the old finger test. Rare, medium rare, 
medium well done, burnt of the cheek. So like I said, what you want to do is keep turning it. Don't let it burn, don't let it catch. I've seen, seen some posts today and one that really, really confused me was a butcher stating that his beef was naturally grain-fed beef. Cows don't naturally eat grain. Shit that comes from Brazil and Argentina on great big feedlots is fed grain. Grain fattens them quickly. They grow quicker, fat, they can slaughter them quicker. Whereas, proper age cattle in a field eating grass and all the herbs and whatnot. Same as, same as lamb. You don't want spring lamb. You don't want that at Easter. That's bullshit. Best time to eat lamb, September, October, when it's been on the field all summer, eating all the green, all the herbs, all the natural flowers, and that's where your, your, natural, your, your local lamb gets all its flavour. I, I have lamb from October onwards, or when it's over a year, then it's called hogget. Or, over two years, and then we got mutton. So there we are, that steak is at 48 internal temperature, I'm just going to chuck a bit of foil over it, let it rest. And that is as simple as it is to cook a piece of steak. Don't overcomplicate it with all these seasonings and everything, add them after. Um, and when you've got meat as good as that, you don't want to mess about with it. What I'll do is... I'll put a piece of butter on the top of that now as it's resting and let that go over it, into it. It's got its own natural fats and everything. And then the comfy vegetables that are going with it, bit of that beef dripping over the top when that's done. This bullshit that fat makes you fat is uh, historically from the sugar board. What sort of curry do you want, Oz? We were told the fat makes you fat. Bullshit. Sugar makes you fat. Vegetable oil makes you fat, causes inflammation. It's made in the same factories that diesel's made in. Goes through the same process. When you think, if you could take a, a, a bottle of sunflower oil, go get your diesel car, pour it in a fuel tank, and your car will run. I don't want that in me. I'll stick to my natural fats. My, my dripping. My lard. Butter, proper butter. And when I do a curry, I use ghee, clarified butter. These are natural fats. They're actually good for you. When you look at photos of our grandparents and their grandparents, none of them were fat. They didn't eat all this processed shit. Cheers, right? I wish I was getting paid the money those ones on the telly get paid. You look at the photos and they want fat. They ate proper food. Nutrient dense whole food. When I was a nipper I didn't know all these processed foods, ready meals and all of that. My mum would go to the butchers, she'd get a piece of meat and some vegetables and that was it. And that's how we go. Probably yours, probably. Um, yeah, so what we need to do, we need to get back to the basics of how they used to eat. Admittedly, they had, a lot of them had manual lit jobs. Like my granddad used to walk from all the way down to the Nailers factory, down at Summerton Park, opposite the county, the county ground. And then he'd walk home to all when he'd do, a, do his eight hour shift in the nailers factory. But he used to eat beef dripping and, you know, lard. And I do. All this processed shit, I don't want it. It's no good for you. Things that have got 20 ingredients 
half of them you can't pronounce, half of them have got a chemical name. That's, that's not food. Food is the ingredient. I've got a piece of meat, I've got some parsnips, some carrots and some sprouts. That's it. None of this hydrogenated this, processed this, sugar added. Why? Why add all of that shit? Anyway, I rambled on a lot. My steak's rested. My stuff's ready to go. I'm going to have my tea. I'm going to have a can of Brewdog Nanny State. The old alcohol free. Or I might have an alcohol free gin and tonic. How things change. Enjoy your evening people. I'll stick some photos up of the, uh, the finished article. I put some photos up earlier of the actual steak that I got from Mag. It is absolutely fantastic. Support your local butcher, support your local producers, your farmers. Eat local, eat well, ditch the processed shit, and have a good one. Ta-da, people.